Hey everybody and thank you for joining us as we do our first ever and hopefully last ever fully online Knox graduation. Uh, we, this is not ideal, all of you know that, and what we're going to be doing here is just attempting to give you some kind of official congratulations for all of your hard work. Um, we want to make sure that all of you know, graduates, that uh, next year for the graduation in 2021, we'd love to have you come and participate. So even though you have officially graduated here this year, and we'll make note of that now, come and join us and come participate in person so that we can see you, you can see us, and we can say goodbye one more time. We also just appreciate everybody's forbearance as we do the very best with this. I'm sure we'll have more ideas on how to do it better that will hopefully never get used as we look into the future. So thank you for joining us as we get ready to officially kick off the Knox 2020 online graduation. Welcome to the 2020 Knox commencement. My name is Josh Bruce and I'm the Dean of Students and I wanna to say to you on behalf of the entire Knox community, congratulations. You have worked hard. I'm guessing when you applied to come to Knox as a student, you weren't thinking that when you got to graduation that you'd be sitting in your kitchen or in your living room, but this is the situation that we're in now. And we wanna say amidst all the uncertainty of coronavirus and all the different challenges that we're all facing, that we're excited for you. We're excited for you for what God is going to do in and through you in the coming years. To those of you who have walked alongside a student, perhaps as a, a spouse or a family member, have provided encouragement, we want to thank you as well. We want to invite all of you in this commencement service to join us as we thank God for what he has done in and through our students over the last years, and as we look forward very excitedly to the future and what God is going to do with you in the years to come. Our scripture reading for this service comes to us from 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 6 through 8. Let's hear God's holy word. If you put these instructions before the brothers and sisters, you will be a good servant of Christ Jesus, nourished on the words of the faith and of the sound teaching that you have followed. Have nothing to do with profane myths and old wives' tales. Train yourself in godliness. For while physical training is of some value, godliness is valuable in every way, holding promise both for the present life and the life to come. Let's pray together. Father, we give you thanks for this time. We give you thanks for those who are watching. We pray that this service would be an act of worship to you. We give you the glory for all that you've done at Knox and in these students' lives. We pray that this service would be glorifying to you, that it would be encouraging to our students and for the work and all that they have learned. Father, we offer this up to you and ask that you would bless it now. In Jesus' name, amen. This is the strangest graduation ever, and not just because they asked me to speak, but because there's no one here. And as I was thinking back upon my last class at Knox Seminary in 1993, it was with Dr. Raymond. Some of you <clears throat> may have heard of Dr. Raymond, some of you may have even met him, but he was a, a burly bear of a man who loved his students. And I remember at the end of that class, knowing that there were a couple of us who were going to be graduating, he said, remember this verse. And he turned to 1 Timothy 4 and said, train yourself to be godly. He said, you will go out of here and you will graduate and the evil one will tempt you to do other things but never forget what I've told you here, train yourself to be godly. In this book of 1 Timothy, Paul writes a book to Timothy because he knows he may not see him again. And so since he may not see him again, he writes down instructions that will be helpful to them. Some of you who are graduating, I, I may not see you again. I know you would have come from a long distance to be here, and since you're not, you may not ever come back to Knox's actual physical campus. 
But I wanted to remind you, just as Paul reminded Timothy, train yourself to be godly. I want to remind you that the evil one will throw all kinds of things in your way to keep you from doing it. But train yourself to be godly. When I was a kid, whenever we went on vacation, when we stopped at a hotel, my, my father would always look in the phone book for two things. First, he looked in the phone book for people named Lamerson, because it's such an unusual name, he figured if they had the same last name, we were probably related in some way. And then he would look at churches. Since he was a pastor, he just looked at other churches, how they were advertising in the yellow pages. And one day, somewhere in Georgia, I was about 12 years old, I remember that he found this ad that said, Baptist Church and Chicken Restaurant. And I said, Dad, we got to go there. That's got to be the greatest church in the world. They serve you chicken. So he said, no, we're not, we're not going there. I said, well, could you at least call? So he did, <clears throat> wanting me to be satisfied. He did call. And they answered the phone, Baptist Church and Chicken Restaurant. And he said, you know, I just saw your ad in the, in the, in the phone book, and I wanted to know what time uh, services were. And they said, we don't have any services anymore. He said, what happened was that we started out as a Baptist church, and we were having a hard time financially. And so the minister's wife's chicken chicken recipe was so good that she used to make chicken after church, and lots of people would come. And we'd sell the chicken to help the church. And after a while, more people began coming, and we began making a lot more money from the chicken than we did from the church. And so eventually, we just decided to drop the church and turn it into a chicken restaurant. And that's what it is now. We just kept the name because that's what people know us by, the Baptist Church and Chicken Restaurant. I urge you today to know that there will be something in your life that will distract you from the gospel And that will distract you from godliness. It's probably not fried chicken, but it's something. And I want you today, for the rest of your lives, to remember that I stood here and carried on the words of my own professor, Dr. Raymond, and I reminded you, train yourself to be godly. Let's pray. Our Father, we are thankful that you have given us our own salvation. We are thankful that you love us. We pray that you will bind the evil one, that you will remind us always to continue, even after our education, that we we will continue to train ourselves to love you and to be godly. And we pray this in the strong name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Come now to the conferral of degrees. Normally at this point, we are presenting the graduates to the board, to the faculty, and to the audience. At home, this is your time to be presented to whomever you're watching with. And for those who are watching this ceremony, for others in your family, reach out to them and recognize them because they are being presented to you as graduates. And to you graduates, this is what we say. Knox Seminary exists for the purpose of preparing you for ministry. You are our work. You are what we are for. We are for God's church so that you can be better prepared for the call that he's given to you. A call to present the gospel to those who don't know it, to disciple those who do, and in your own life to declare and demonstrate the great good news that things are far worse for you and for all of us than we could ever have imagined, but the work of Jesus Christ is far greater than we could ever dream. And so as we present these diplomas to you, it's with a mix of pleasure and sadness because we will be sending you off into your vocations in the church. 
no longer a part of this community as regular students, but always connected to it as the place that sent you out, prepared for God's calling in his church. So we congratulate you for all of the work that goes into this degree, and we look forward to hearing how God uses you in his church in the future. So in this part, it'll be a little different, obviously. And what we're going to do is have the directors of the programs come up and they will be calling the names of each of the graduates. This is starting with the certificate recipients. There are two of those, and so I will be handling the certificates. Our first presentation is for the Certificate in Biblical Languages. The recipient of the Certificate of Biblical Languages this year at Knox Theological Seminary is Brian Curtis Patrick II, and congratulations. The next certificate is a Certificate in Biblical Studies. We have one recipient also of the Certificate in Biblical Studies, and that recipient is Kay Cameron Knight. Congratulations to you. The next degree program will be the Master of Arts in Christian and Classical Studies, and coming forward to read off the names of our graduates in the MACCS is Dr. Joshua Bruce. I want to congratulate the, the following people who have received the Master of Arts in Christian and Classical Studies degree. Joshua Brandon Dyson, Heather Lynn Owens, Charles J. Schulte, Emily Rose White, Catherine Parcell White. Congratulations. I'd like to congratulate those who are getting an MA in Biblical and Theological Studies. You have studied hard, you have studied the scripture, and done well. If I mispronounce your name, please excuse me and realize that usually at graduation I go around and ask people to make sure, but I'm unable to do so, so I, I beg your forgiveness if I do. The following are those who are graduating with an MA in Biblical and Theological Studies. Jacob Clark Beck, Timothy M. Clement, Jonathan Dyer, Eileen Gournal, Andrew Gregory, Michael Derrick Gregory, Brent Gordon Hagee II, Gregory Allen Height, Tyson Lee Hilton, Alfonso Jackson Sr., Thomas John Alexander Jansen, Allen Turner Jones Jr., Di Kip Kai, Stephen Gerard Langelia, Michael Andrew Liebler, Jason Alonzo Mills, John Robert Smirznak, Jr., Jeffrey David Smith, Sean Philip Talbot, Manel Telsey, Grayson Powell Walker, Joseph John Zelenica, or Zelnica. Congratulations on your hard work, and may the Lord continue to cause you to grow in Him. And now, presenting the Master of Divinity, my friend and colleague, Robbie Krauss. The advisor for the Master of Divinity program, it's my privilege to read these names on behalf of the Board of Directors of Knox Seminary. We're happy to confer the Master of Divinity degree on these students. Robert B. Andrusy, William Dunn Bushman, Scott Christopher Carson, John Cleveland, Julie Marie Hawkins, 
Gunner Preston Testall, Jonathan G. Watson. Congratulations, guys, for all your hard work and your degree of the Master of Divinity program. God bless you. It is my honor and privilege to announce this year's graduates for the Doctor of Ministry program. You have worked very hard on this. Your ministry has uh, brought you to this point where you have learned more, where you have thought through issues within your own context, and you are now in a position to return to your ministry and see it grow. And we pray that the Lord would bless you as you leave here. These are this year's graduates. Danny Altia Gamadi, Philip Anthony Apple, Tommy Boland, Jeremy Lee Fair, Joshua Brett Hansen, Zachary McBain Hicks, David L. Snyder, and Norman C. Weatherhead. Congratulations to these Doctor of Ministry graduates. I now invite my colleague Sam Lamerson to come up to begin with the first of this year's awards for academic merit. It is at this point in the ceremony, it's, it's the faculty's distinct privilege to be able to recognize certain students for, for particularly meritorious work, those students who have gone above and beyond. And all of you, I know, have worked hard. All of you are getting a degree because you have worked very hard. But there are a few students who have worked exceptionally hard in particular areas, and we like to recognize those. The first award is in biblical studies, an area that is dear to my own heart because that's the area that I specialize in. And the person who is getting this award, I've known for a long time. I've had him in a variety of different classes. I've sat around in the hall talking to him, and he has always been a wonderful representative of his church and of the gospel. And so it is today a great and distinct privilege on behalf of the faculty of Knox Theological Seminary, I am very pleased to present this year's award in biblical studies to my friend and colleague in the ministry, Will Bushman. It is my privilege to award this year's um, recipient for the award in historical studies to someone who has demonstrated exceptional ability in this area. One of the things that we emphasize here at Knox Seminary when we study history is that history is not a, a field of study that exists in isolation, but that it belongs properly in conversation with and in relation to biblical studies and theological studies and understanding that the God of history as revealed throughout the Old Testament and throughout the New Testament continues to be faithful to his people from the time of Christ and the time of the writings of the New Testament up until today. And we see how men and women throughout history have wrestled with understanding exactly what we are to know and learn from scripture and apply it well to the world around us. And so there is a unique aspect of historical studies that requires someone who is exceptionally good at it to be able to maintain a presence in the biblical study side and in the theological study side. And it's not an easy thing to do to find that balance and yet do historical inquiry well. And there's one person that clearly rose to the top when it came to this year's graduates that demonstrated exceptional ability in this area. She is a remarkable student she is a remarkable minister of God's word, 
And we are very pleased and honored to be able to award this year's award for historical studies to Julie Hawkins. Congratulations. As the director of the Master of Arts in Christian and Classical Studies, it is now my privilege to award the award for excellence in the Master of Art in Christian and Classical Studies. This award goes to a student who has proven excellent, excellent academic work, but also proven to us that he has excellent character. Occasionally as a professor, you get a student who challenges you to think, but also sees things in the text that are encouraging and helpful to other students in class discussions, in discussion forum posts, and so on. The student I have in mind is Josh Dyson. Josh Dyson has consistently excelled as a student in this program. His written work has been of the highest caliber, and he has routinely submitted work to me and other professors that have impressed us and challenged us. Additionally, Josh has balanced his academic pursuits at Knox with the demands of being a husband and a father, a, head, a headmaster of a Christian and classical school, and a candidate for ordination. Along the way, Josh's concern for the classics and literature has manifested itself in the publication of numerous blog articles and things of that nature regarding classical education and regarding a Christ-centered approach to educating students. Josh's love for Christ and the kingdom has been evident in all of this. So congratulations to you, Josh, on your receipt of this award. It's richly deserved. The next award is the Systematic Theology Award, and it's my pleasure to be able to present this award to a student whom I've had in Knox uh, classes several times over the last few years, and who has consistently, both in systematic theology and in any classes having to do with theological studies and even philosophical studies, demonstrated a, a good mind and a dedication to working hard, to understand, to learn, to be able to recall the, both the details and the process of thinking that goes into systematic theology. So it is, uh, it's, it's exciting to see that dedication and that effort, to see that skill and that talent, and so it's my pleasure to be able to present the award to Sean Talbot for systematic theology. Congratulations, Sean, on graduation and on this award. my privilege to present the award in preaching. I get to oversee the preaching practicum here at Knox, and that means listening to lots and lots of sermons as students take what they've learned in their homiletics course and preaching theory, and then put it into practice as they're preaching in front of congregations and live audiences. It's very humbling to listen to real ministry going on through these sermons. And what's really great is when I'm listening to a sermon to evaluate it, that I find myself no longer doing the grading process, but simply being benefited by this preaching of hearing God's word, uh, that it speaks to my soul. So this uh, recipient of this award happened a number of occasions as I was listening to their sermons uh, and their teaching. Uh, this uh, award winner uh, speaks to uh, primarily teenagers and youth, so uh, a difficult crowd perhaps to speak into, to get their attention, who has spoken in clever ways, but also passionately about the gospel, wrangling kids for Christ, you may say. So I'm glad to present this award to Robbie Andresy. Good job, Robbie. We thank you for all your work and preaching here at Knox, and God bless you. Congratulations. Well, for all of you at home or in whatever location as you watch this, we would like to say to the graduates, congratulations. Now you have, in this very strange virtual way, actually graduated. We are proud of you. We are glad for what you've done. We've got a few words specifically for you, but before we do that, we also want to say thank you. And this is my encouragement to you to also say thank you, because we know that you going through this program was not just about your work. 
Say thank you to the churches that supported you and helped you to attend. Say thank you to the family members and friends that encouraged you along the way. And both from Knox on, by me, but also from you to them, we want to say especially thank you to the spouses. We know that seminary is a challenge. It's expensive, it takes time, especially in these online classes. It can be hidden away and cause somebody to be in the house looking at a screen but not participating in the day-to-day -day life of your family in those moments, and this is hard. We understand that this is a sacrifice for the students, but it's a sacrifice for many people around them. So to spouses and to the children, but to everybody in our broader community, we say thank you for your support, and this is us challenging the graduates to say thank you as well. But now you graduates, let's get back to you. In introducing the diplomas and in introducing the graduation ceremony, we said Knox exists to prepare you for ministry. Now this is our part to say, as we hand you this diploma and as we send you out into ministry, many of you continuing ministries you already had, understand that that is what you are called to. We are charging you with being faithful to the call God has given you. We are charging you with using well the resources that you've gotten by means of this study. Take the theology of the church. Take the words of scripture that you've learned to interpret. Take the history of those who have gone before you. Take all of the different elements that have been part of your education here and bring them into God's church, whether in the church itself, in ministries associated with it, to those that you happen to run into that want to grow in their walk with Christ or to those who've never heard the good news, take this and put it to work. When you come to Knox, you say, I feel called. When we give you this diploma, we say, we agree, you're called. When your church puts you in position, they say, you have God's call. Go and fulfill it. Not fulfilling it so that you can be righteous, but now recognizing, I hope through the studies here, that it's because of the work of Jesus Christ that you are righteous. And now we are set free to fulfill this call, not so that we can belong, but because we do belong. God is your God. And through the work of Jesus Christ, he has set your sins aside in, in the days of of glory, you'll be able to put on the robe of Christ's righteousness and stand before the king and be told, well done, good and faithful servant. And knowing that that work is done, go and do good work as a faithful servant. Congratulations. And to all of you, we say, serve God's church well. As we conclude this ceremony, uh, congratulations once again. I invite you to pray with me now, if you would. Father, we come before you humbled, recognizing the work that you have done in and through these students and now graduates' lives. We see your faithfulness in bringing them here in seeing them through their studies and now calling them forward from here to fruitful ministry. And so we pray, Father, that your spirit would be with them, that they would remember what they have learned here in their classes, but also, Father, that they would remember those moments where you were faithful to them when it seemed too hard to go on, when it was too frustrating, or perhaps so confusing that maybe there were moments where finding the next step forward was a challenge, and yet you were faithful. And so this is your graduating class, and we pray, Father, that, that you would continue to work in them, that you would continue to remind them of your faithfulness, that you would continue to guide each of their steps as you call them forward from here into each successive phase of their life, and Father, we pray that we, your people, would be faithful, that in each one of those steps we would be humble before you, that we would listen well, that we would remember your faithfulness well, and that we would continue to proclaim and declare in the words that we say and in the decisions we make 
the goodness and truth and beauty of your word. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen.